Welcome back to the Cold Cans Podcast. It's been too long since I've told you about Blue Apron. Have you heard of it? Flunker, new addition to the podcast, has literally never heard of Blue what Apron. What is Blue Apron? <laughs> has been Matt, baffled. you don't know Blue Apron. Do you think that's just when you're baking a blueberry pie and you make a little mess in the kitchen? Is that what you've been thinking this <laughs> whole time? I don't know what that's called. Okay. The, the, it, it may sound like we're playing into stuff. Flunker, I, I can't stress enough, literally did not know anything about Blue Apron. I think he was aware of it culturally, but once we... Culturally just, aware of it. Flunker I've had the seen... notion that it was like $600 a meal or something. <laughs> yeah, like. something outrageous. How else do you get ribeyes to the doorstep without going bad? Well... Hey, I'll tell you what. <laughs> have you heard of the supply chain management that Blue Apron delivers to you? They take out the middlemen, Okay. There's no distributor going from the farmer to the grocery store and then all everything in between. They've limited okay. all they eliminated all those jobs. <laughs> That's efficiency, the point. Efficiency. And they've given that money to some p- computer programmer somewhere who makes sure their app runs efficiently. <laughs> the the one is who on need call. It. <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway, Blue Apron's a great service. They're doing the world a favor by offering a two-person plan that starts at nine ninety nine per serving. That's a thirty four ninety four weekly total. Who couldn't scrounge that up? Yeah, you're spending eight bucks a day on drip coffee at your <laughs> local hipster coffee shop. Just put some of that towards Blue Apron, <laughs> and you might be asking, how do I sign up? Well, yeah. that's where we got you covered. The boys here got you covered. The boys here, yeah, yeah we yeah. as in we, yes. the boys, the we. <clears throat> My voice is a little scratchy. I should have eaten my chicken soup (laughs) from Blue Apron this week, but I didn't. I was a naughty little chap. Yep. So go to coldcanspodcast.com slash Blue Apron. Sign up. You're going to get $50 off your first two boxes. Are you... Are you (laughs) understanding what kind of savings that is? Booker, do you you understand now? (laughs) Massive savings. That's massive savings. That's massive savings. So in addition to that two... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. And it comes right to the door. That comes right to your doorstep. You'll be They'll lucky come in if, if you want. Oh, yeah. You prop your door open. The Blue Apron man will come in. He'll start cooking it for you. Ooh, that's move not in true. With you. That's not true. Our you, lawyers are advising can, against this. You can you can start a family with the Blue Apron <laughs> delivery man. Yeah, that's the family plan, actually. <laughs> that is the family the plan. The man or woman comes into your house and marries you. Is that right? also nine ninety nine per serving? <laughs> yeah, yes. Actually, only seven forty nine <laughs> per serving. But you do have to pay child support, so that's where it evens out. Anyway, go to Cold Cans Why would Podcast. You have to pay child support if they're moving in and starting a family. Well, they're, they're going to leave, leave yeah, after your subscription leave. is ended. Yes, okay. when you stop affording that. All right. But you save anyway. fifty dollars by using <laughs> yeah, the yeah, link yeah. Nick's about to tell you. <laughs> and speaking of savings, you're going to save your health with these recipes for the week of when we're recording this. There's cilantro <laughs> beef tacos. We got Mediterranean chicken and orzo, seared salmon grain pole. Um, yes, please. Smoky Brussels sprouts and black bean tacos. Eh, yeah, that does that. not sound like it goes together. <laughs> what the hell? <clears throat> uh, we got pasta and Italian salsa verde. Oh, no. They're doing the whole fusion thing. No. My buddy said. <laughs> no. Uh, Barkhouse was a fan of the show and loyal listener. Uh-huh. S- had this thing of, like, too much fusion when a restaurant, like, tries to do too much oh, fusion. Oh, I like that. Yeah. And this, I think, pasta in Italian salsa verde might be an yeah. example of too much fusion. There should fusion. be a fusion limit. It should be a, a, a continental drift. What it, What am I looking for? Continental, continental divide? divide? Continental divide fusion limit. Oh. You Are you saying we do... wall off based on geography <laughs> and race? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what I'm saying. No, but you can't do Latin America fusion with Italian. It's just not mm, going to work. Sure. If you're doing Asian fusion, I'm okay with it. But it, always the star of any Food Network show is the one who, like, was born in Costa Rica and then trained in a French patisserie sure. Some or of something. Them, okay, so that guy could pull it off. But for the rest of us? <laughs> yes. Unless you're ordering from. <laughs> <laughs> then you will enjoy these meals. We've got spiced cauliflower and chickpea bowl. Up. No, there's so many meals to choose from. <laughs> Adobe-style chicken and last of all, ooh, I like this out of this one, zesty pork burgers. Ooh. Put that pork burger in my pie hole. Go to blue, or no, coldcanspodcast.com slash blue apron. Blow your mind with these savings. And we're back for another week. Ladies and gentlemen, after our 25-minute read for Blue Apron, <laughs> we are uh, 
What are we having today? Ooh, we're spilling. We're, we're spilling we're just stuff. So Top. this is a fan, friend of the show, friend of the podcast. Uh, his nickname is Big Sexy. I don't know if I'll say his full name on here. Say his full name. He works in the restaurant industry, which you can get your reputation ruined with if, the wrong With the cold reference. cans, boys? Yes. <laughs> that cold cans bump puts you straight out of work. Yeah. But uh, he's a buddy who lives in Chicago, a good friend of Matt's. Matt grew up with him, and I met him in college. And we should mention- Now he's we're, a better friend of mine than he- <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I was just going to say we should mention we're with the Matt yes. reference is- Welcome uh, back. Matt Flunker, Happy back on the ones and twos. So anyway, this guy lives in Chicago. I was yep. there about a month ago and stopped in to see him. He provided us with this beautiful beer from the Lake Effect Brewery. It's called the Blueberry Berliner Weiss Style Ale. From, and it's part of their Inland Seas series. Right. This Do you is guys want to series. learn more about this? Tell us about it. Well. Go to coldcanspodcast.com <laughs> slash blue apron. Well, the Inland Seas series takes us on a 2,000-mile tour of the Great Lakes region from the headwaters of Lake, lake Nipigon, the highest lake elevation. What lake was that? That's Lake Nipigon. Nipigon. <laughs> Do you know how to say it? Can I've never it? seen that before. N-I-P-I-G-O-N. Nipigon. Okay, thank you. Nipigon. It's like Michigan, but nipples. So this is the Lake Huron edition. They have one for each lake. I think most of us are probably familiar with the Lake Michigan rather than the rest of the lake. Lake Huron. Lake Huron, I think I'm least familiar. Maybe Lake Erie I'm least familiar. Yeah, that's the the ones way out there, Ontario, Mm -hmm. Erie. Right. This one is on like the eastern side of Michigan, basically, between it and Canada. Anyway, uh, each beer is inspired by the characteristics and mood of each lake and some feature ingredients from around that lake. There are eight beers in the series released throughout the year. This was one of the summer ones that has blueberries in it, saying, Blueberries are ubiquitous in Michigan and Ontario. Provide the color, sweetness, and acidic complexity to this light-bodied tart ale. Yeah, and I, I've logged on, I've logged online, and I went to Lake Effect Not again. Brewing. I went to LakeEffectBrewing.com, Ooh. where they clarified a little farther. They say, Lake Huron is drained by the St. Clair and Detroit River before emptying into Lake Erie. Oops, wrong one. <laughs> I was going to say, what? This but, is the uh, Detroit River. I'm spitting it out. Yeah, d- d- I take that back. But this oh, is, no, <laughs> so this is, this Lake Huron uh, Blueberry Berliner Weiss Ale is a 2018, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a 2018 <laughs> beverage, uh, but available this year, but available all year this year. That's why we're drinking the summertime beer. I will give you a break there. Graphic design and the web layout here doesn't make any sense. No, the description is above, above the label. The picture. That's, yeah, that's just sense. astounding. Yeah. So I apologize, listeners. <clears throat> what what are your what's your take on the first few drinks? A little tart. It is tart. A little tart, huh? Watch your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I I gotta say, you were reading the description off the bottleneck, and Matt bottleneck. and I looked the bottleneck, Nick, and. Uh, <laughs> Bottle neck neck again, nip again, <laughs> like nip nip, nip, nip neck again, again. N- nip again. Um, and Matt and I looked at each other after the first sip and just revulsion <laughs> on our face. Yeah. yeah, it it's something different. It's tart, yes. Like I wasn't prepared for that after I got done reading it and finally took a sip. Yeah, it. I it, was expecting like a blue moon style mm. Weiss. Yeah, yeah, Berliner Weiss, and it's much more of a it's a sour beer. So it tastes like it's absolutely. It does, yeah. Let's see what a Berliner Weiss style means. Sure, maybe that's something we should know around here. I think this, you know, along the lines of um, Rodenbach Grand Cru, where it mm. kind of tastes almost close to wine. Yeah, Rather that's a good beer, comparison. This is, this is it's just not as good as Rodenbach Grand Cru, but that's a comparison. What what is Berliner? I have Weiss? some insider knowledge on this Berliner Weiss. Oh boy, it's a cloudy sour beer. This says of around three percent alcohol by volume. It is a regional variation on the white beer style from northern Germany, dating back to at least the 16th century. Okay. But this is 5% ABV. Right. So you're getting a, a more So it's solid... a style ale, I guess. Right. Or it's the Berliner Weiss style ale. Right. And this is, I mean, you know, this is their temporary 2018 <clears throat> series, so you can't judge it too too much. I mean, they, they haven't had decades or anything to perfect this. This is something <laughs> that they're experimenting with. Right. Because they and, offer a, a, a ton of other year-round beers. What were you going to say, Nick? Well, our friends at Vine Pair uh, have a breakdown of the eight best Berliner Weiss-style beers for summer sipping. Okay. One would think. Unless the distribution of, uh, of this well, beer Well, no, the top, the it. number eight is a Chicago beer, but this one's not on there. The top one is a Firestone Walker under Currents. Firestone Walker is like one of those smaller breweries in California that's kind of become a mm. cult favorite. Uh, but yeah, it seems like this is a style that more 
breweries are getting into. Sure. They're experimenting, which yeah. is cool. I'm all for it. This one isn't quite there yet. Maybe they'll make a 2019 series that, that gets there. They, they have year-round beers. They have a Bitchin' Blonde, Falcon Dive IPA, Cooler Sea, Cool Lake Kolsch. Um, and then they have some seasonals like Lake Effect Snow, Espresso Gone Stout, 45th Ward Pale Ale, Pastique, which is watermelon Saison. So they have they are doing other Saisons, mm. a Grapefruit IPA, and so on. So, you know, they're a brewery that's trying things in Chicago. I got to give them that. But that's cool, yeah. And they're, they were established in 2011. I thought that said 2001 before. So mm. haven't been around for too, too long. But right. I guess for a craft brewery, that's quite a long time. They're and Chicago going. has a good beer scene, too. And they're trying to do things other than just an IPA. Yeah. yeah. Which is respectable. Most most places just kind of experiment within that realm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's totally true. The the craft beer, the lazy craft beer seems to be just we've made another like triple or quadruple right. IPA. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Time, which is we're going to add so many eyes. And, By but, the way, did you see Optimism now makes like Pilsners and Lagers? Yeah. They've gone the other way. Yeah. Yeah. That's and interesting. Apparently that's, those are harder to make than um, IPAs and, and ales. Yeah. I think it's because of the cold fermentation versus warm fermentation. That's what makes it more difficult. Mm. We could get into that on some episode, actually, talking about the differences. What are you talking about? (laughs) (laughs) Because I did one search, finally, after, like, doing 65 episodes of this show, and what's the difference between a lager and an ale? (laughs) And now I know. One tastes better than the other? Well, that's the thing. Like, if it's more difficult to make and it's such a simpler... It's kind of smooth, easy drinking beer. There's really not an incentive for a no, totally. to go ahead and do it. So it's cool that Optimism's trying it. You know, the cold can's Kolsch, which is still in the works. It is. Listeners have been salivating. Their glands have been salivating. Um, they've been mailing it in. And they've been licking envelopes with salivated glands, right. sending them in with their <laughs> Rainier pop tabs on it. Remember that? <laughs> yeah. Call back. Enough with the Rainier pop tabs. <laughs> we won't take any more. Uh no, but uh, listeners have been asking about Cold Cans Kolsch. It's going to happen. We bought a book on how to brew beer. We're, uh, we're working on it. Now, Nick, now, 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 now. Now, 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 now. now. Think. now what's, what are you looking at here? You have a furrow, furrowed brow. I'm not brow. sure if, look at the darkness of my Did cup. it need to be shaken? Like oh. an orange juice? Oh, yeah. My, I don't look know how dark it's... mine is. Yeah, yeah. So we're getting to the, listeners to the should know, we're getting to the, the bottom of this big, we have this p- one point... One pint, nine ounce bottle. Yeah, Get it's a wine bottle, which is like twenty five ounces. The top few drinks were all like relatively light in texture. You get in the bottom, and like now we have light some sediment. Haze, yeah. yeah, Nigel Hayes. A light Nigel Hayes. <laughs> oh, um, we yeah. uh, we're not going. Okay, okay. open the brakes. Um, does it taste any different though? Because I'm getting the same flavor profile, even maybe though maybe a sediment. little smoother. Maybe, maybe I'm just numb to the taste. I, I'm the taste is growing on me. I do think this is potentially something that could be. I'm not jumping right into the parable or terrible, but it's something that could probably be serviced oh, and aided by food. It's much stronger at the bottom. Really stronger mm-hmm. in what way? Alcohol more or more tart or I think more tart. The sour is much more pronounced. Okay, I don't get any more blueberry or less, but the the that, punch of the tartness. Th- that may be the case, but I the first few sips it was. I think, like you were saying earlier, Nick, it, it kind of numbed me a bit. I, yeah, I, don't get I think the that's same what I'm dealing with. Attitude with it at the bottom, but I I do think it could be paired with with some sort of food. I don't. I'm not jumping right in here, mm. but I think that would aid something like this. Um, I, I know it's a summer sipping beer, but like this doesn't have like the the fact that we winced at the first flavor mm-hmm. of this. Mm-hmm. Like certain wines are like this. Like really full bodied mm-hmm. wine is kind of really meant to be paired with cheese. I think there's something that could soften this a bit and might work pretty well. So what sure. during the summer do you think? Like a, a hot dog sandwich or a... Well, to, if we want to get into this, I was going to go with bread. <laughs> <laughs> but the I really, I honestly do think uh, like something to soften this, like bread, something neutral yeah. would potentially help. Yeah. I don't think you'd mix tart with another flavor. Um, like or a hot cheese, dog sandwich honestly, bun or cheese. We were talking about wine, but cheese, cheese would, make, would, yeah, would be Yeah, I think really cheese would good. be nice. A sharp cheddar. Now, cheese over bread, we're going to get into this. So before we came in here, Matt sat down. He made the proclamation that he's going to make babka this. What, are you going to make it tonight? What do, when are you making no, tomorrow. babka? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. And it, this it is inspired like by- at least a day. About yeah. a day. It Del, takes about a Del day. Dough has to rise. It has to prove. You got to get that first proof, second proof. Second proof is very important. <laughs> Matt and I have been watching a great, a great British baking show on Netflix. 
I got hooked together. After. You guys go to each other's house. We do. Yeah, we it, do marathons watch, right. daily. <laughs> we don't work other. anymore. Okay. We've cruised through what, three seasons this week. I think. <laughs> in two days. Of God. That that, that explains totally the Bobka. True, but yeah. So the Bobka for the uninitiated. Can you explain it, Matt? What what is a Bobka? Um, I guess my description earlier was a cinnamon roll made in a bread pan. All right, and this is what got to. The debate of because it's made in a bread pan, you view babka as bread. I think it's bread, yeah. Right. And now you make meatloaf in a bread pan, so would you view a uh, a nice piping hot meatloaf as a loaf of bread? It's a great idea, <laughs> and I think we could it's, slap. It's meat bread. We could put some meat in between that yeah. bread. Some bologna and cheddar cheese between <laughs> two slices of meatloaf. It's a hell of an idea. That's a Blue Apron. <laughs> it actually is. Yeah. Yeah. This will be on the tail end of Blue Apron as it's about to close. <laughs> We're getting the bologna cheddar cheese meatloaf. The Central if Wisconsin the pasta, series. If you thought the pasta and salsa verde was good. <laughs> <laughs> this fusion of I don't know what. Confusion. <laughs> thank you. That is. Thank you very much. Confusion. That is really good. Later. Well done. Yeah. Walk off into the sunset, Nick. <laughs> But so it did. It did. So do you, you know, I was asking some like, what, what do you consider bread? Like, do you consider a croissant bread? And I actually posed that to you. If you consider babka bread, which I consider to be a pastry, a Nick pastry, Nick pastry, <laughs> what would you consider like a croissant or I, a biscuit? That's what the kids used to those call would, me those in would be... elementary school to make fun of me oh, for really? being fat. So I'm thanks sorry. a lot. I'm sorry. I didn't thanks, mean Joe. that. I'm. I kind of like. I'm gonna take take the rest of the week off. Your last name's fun because you can do a couple of things with it. it Pastry's is cruel, and I apologize. I didn't know that people <laughs> it's not did cruel. that. It's a like you're a you're a flaky, buttery, delicious dessert. Flaky and buttery are two not <laughs> things that a human would want to be described as. Sweet, I would have went with sweet. <laughs> <laughs> and baked, bro. <laughs> this so guy baked. here in Seattle. Uh, but no, the a petri I think is fun with yours. Petri dish, sure. Hey, what was the Land Before Time? character yeah petri is he just the, petri? Yeah, the okay. pterodactyl so that's fun that's very fun nick patriot all right i'm a patriot, patriot of our is country also great. there's so much you can do with your last name it's fun <laughs> nothing you could do with flunker <laughs> <laughs> nothing you can say on air no <laughs> um what do you, let's get into the like etymology of your family name where do you think that came from it's a strong german name uh-huh and i've i've looked this up because for a long time, I thought it meant uh, goat fornicator. Oh, no. And turns out that's a lie. People were it messing with you, means, yeah. It actually means petty liar. Oh, wow. Really? In German, yeah. So much more uh, insidious than goat. <laughs> insidious, and also, do you think there's any relation, speaking etymology, with, I mean, the term flunk here it means like you failed at something mm-hmm. or whatever, mm-hmm. and obviously you understand that as your last name being what it is. You think there's a relation between petty liar and... Maybe in German and the word here, flunk. Because that sounds like know. a German word. Flunk. Yeah, flunk. Flunka. If only we could stimmed, look, yeah. If only we could look <laughs> it up and <laughs> No, we, we have we, no we devices. You could spend too much time on this. I love to speculate than to know. Right. That's better. All right. So the bread debate's settled. Um Flunker's wrong and Bobka's <laughs> not bread. Nick, what's your take? Wikipedia describes Bobka as a sweet yeast cake or a potato pie. Mm. Known as a potato hmm. bobka. A pastry. A cake would be a pastry. A Nick pastry. What about now? And then we cake. did. Now Nick alluded to the sandwich thing. <clears throat> we were talking about this before air. And listeners, you could chime in. And I know this is an old played out internet <laughs> it thing. It is. But That's I think why I rolled my eyes when you brought it up. No, beforehand. but I know, I know. And I'm not. I'm not. I don't. Let's think get this subtle. Is, I don't think this is revolutionary. Let's find a new angle. I, I don't think it's any of that. A revolutionary by any means. But I do think like the whole the, the way the internet treated this ridiculous and stupid debate of of what is and isn't a sandwich. Glossed over the actual interesting discussion of, like, uh, you talked about etymology, but just the purpose of words. Like, the internet is playing with the purpose of the word sandwich here, Mm. like doing the is a hot dog a sandwich. To me, the purpose of words is just to kind of drive, if we didn't have words, we would have no clarity. If I needed help, I'd go like, ah! ah," And you wouldn't know, like, what's from from the the animals, from the beast, the common beast. And so. If the purpose of words is to, is to drive clarity, then a sandwich should drive clarity. It doesn't have to be. We we're talking about this. If if we're gonna, if the three of us are going out for lunch, we don't. I don't necessarily need to say I want a pastrami on rye. I may though say, you know, I'm in the mood for a sandwich today. Mm-hmm. And if I do that, and your sorry ass takes me into a hot dog stand, I'm gonna go. Well, 
Now, Funker, you done fucked up because yeah. I said I wanted a sandwich Absolutely and you took me not. to a hot you dog stand. You should have been stand. more clear with what you wanted. Well, I'd say, how could you be this off base on what a sandwich means? <laughs> because I brought you to a place that serves meat in between bread. <laughs> yes. And, and everybody would go, well, this is an insane man. You're and nothing but a petty liar. The debate is settled. <laughs> there it is. Uh, but you mentioned you're a you're a big tent party when it comes to the sandwich definition. Absolutely. And so you went so far as to say a taco is a taco. Is big a big tent party the latest like buzzword around tech In- circles? He just said inclusive. I've no. never heard that. Big tent is that's a political I get it. thing. I get that's it. The but Democratic like, Party's platform. Right? Where do you use it, or where have you heard it used? In it the just con- in, in politics. The con- in the context of what I classify a sandwich. <laughs> and in politics, yeah. which is okay. a taco. <laughs> but I think surprised where these the Democratic Party come from. did this in like the, what the nineties? There it's, was a Big Ten party. It's been it, every, each party kind of describes themselves oh, really? as the Big Ten party because everyone wants to be seen as the party that is is open to new ideas. Clearly, yeah, right. And clearly, right now at this time in history, both could <laughs> could argue that yeah. right. Sorry, back to sandwiches. Yeah, but back to sandwiches. So tacos, I mean, it's preposterous, and you're you're objectively wrong about that, that being a sandwich. <laughs> because, again, if I said I, I'm in the mood for a sandwich at lunch, and we went into a Mexican restaurant, and you got me a taco, I'd say, well, this is taco, and I said sandwich. How far will you go? A pizza? I suppose if you were to full a calzone. A calzone. Can- <laughs> <laughs> a pizza taco fusion? You might be onto something. <laughs> I know. Another Do you eat a calzone with your hands? Not or is that tip- knife and not fork. Typically, okay. But I wouldn't. Is be that a prerequisite for sandwiches? Mm, well, what about the open face sandwich? But again, aren't I'll we getting my into? Hands. I'm a dirty motherfucker. I don't even use hands. <laughs> <laughs> you sick fuck. <laughs> aren't we getting into making up definitions at this point? Didn't we understand the definition of the word until we the internet? Arised a, a, a way to come up with definition, and now we're saying if you pick it up with your hands, it's a did sandwich. We, That's ridiculous. Did we know the definition of the word, or did we just assume this is generally what the word means? So we just assigned it that. Yeah, I think that the latter. Which I, I think, think that, is how definitions come about. Like yeah. that's what dictionaries change over time based on like what the word has come to mean. Um, but like the point is moot. Like that word apparently used to mean the exact opposite of what we now me- mean it as. So moot used to mean up for debate. Now it means like doesn't matter. Oh, that's like, interesting. It's I didn't know that. Spoken for. Is the sandwich moot? Well, it's definitely moot. <laughs> this then. debate is, but <laughs> the sandwich will never be moot. Well, last thing on the sandwich, and I know again this is played out, but a burger. Yeah, definitely a sandwich. A sandwich of what type? Because you could say steak sandwich, BLT sandwich. What is a burger? Burger sandwich. A sandwich of ground beef. Ground beef sandwich. That's what you'd call a burger. <laughs> no, I call it a burger. <laughs> Right, but because it's a different thing. But, but it falls under the definition of a sandwich. I mean, I just I I vehemently disagree. That's fine, Nick, arbiter. No, I mean I totally think sandwich means something, what, and what it means is, like, like a bologna is, sandwich, a turkey or a sandwich, sandwich. So it, has to be, sandwich. It, has to be, it has to be lunch meat, cheese between bread. That's the image that goes into my mind when you say the word sandwich. And if you said I'm in the mood for a sandwich tonight. I would I would think about taking you to a place where you could get turkey and ham or bologna or whatever in between pieces of bread with like some some mustard on it and some uh, lettuce and onions and tomato. That that's what would go in my head. I would not take you to a hot dog stand. I would not take you to a burger joint, and I would not take you to a taco place. You fucking lunatic! <laughs> the taco one is where you lose me, especially. Yeah. Like that's that's it's something a, in his so mind, different. It's a it's a it's a it's a Mexican sandwich, a taco. Yeah, tacos originated yeah. from Mexico. Right? Maybe the I quesadilla you could like legitimately oh, compare the quesadilla to the Nick. grilled cheese. Ugh. I is, mean, you can't. You can compare it. Is but a grilled it cheese a sandwich? It is. Oh. To me, it is. What then? What's I agree with Nick on difference? that one. Yeah, that one's a good one. That's a cheese sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, a grilled cheese a case, sandwich. A is Actually, not... you see that on okay, menus. So... You see that on menus. You see grilled cheese sandwich. Okay, so if, yes, if a quesadilla. You... you don't see quesadilla tortilla sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. We're all familiar with roast beef, like the slow cooked in the crock pot. Never roast heard beef. of it. Tell me more. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, roast beef sandwich. Right, right. So you put that on a bun and eat it. What's that? Roast beef sandwich. Okay, now let's just assume that instead of beef, it's pork, and you put that on a bun. What's that called? 
uh, shredded pork sandwich. Okay, now let's just call them carnitas and put it between a tortilla. So, so you'd say this is a... So the bread you'd, matters. You'd say the shredded pork, and now Nick is, for the listeners, is assembling our parable or terrible. You would say that pork sandwich is a shredded pork sandwich on case, on tortilla. <laughs> they're all Just sa- like you'd say pastrami my, my, on my rye, you'd say shredded sand- pork on they're quesadilla. They're all sandwiches. They're all sandwiches. I mean, I just couldn't disagree more. Smarter, I think you're wrong smarter minds have disagreed. We're not going <laughs> to solve I think, this today. I think Cold Cans Nation could solve it. <laughs> yes. I really, Sound I, off. I do hate to drag the sandwich thing into the I internet. like your initial thing of just like thinking, let's go get a sandwich. Yeah, that's the best way to do it. And you uh, would not go you get say, a hot dog. Yeah, yeah. You'd say, let's, say, get, let's get a burger. Exactly Yeah, right. let's get a burger. Let's. But that doesn't make a burger not a sandwich. But but again, the point of a word is for specificity, is for me to communicate to you, I'd like a sandwich, and for you not to think, but, well, he must mean a burger, maybe, or a hot dog. I'm giving you something more specific with my definition, which is I want like a BLT or and something. And we have more specific words for more specific sandwiches. Burger, hot dog, quesadilla, So you put taco. sandwich right pretty much on the level of the word so, food. It'd be like car. <laughs> it'd be like car. I want to buy a car. Yeah, you, you put it on that level. Yes, I, I would do. put it on the level of I want to buy an SUV. No, and therefore you, you I don't want on a Ferrari. The level, I want to buy an Outback. No, yes, that's a that's no. a pastrami yes. on rye, an Outback. No, but an SUV is a sandwich. The SUV is the sandwich is the SUV of the car world, <laughs> of, the, of the food world. I say. Sandwich utility vehicle. <laughs> we all knew. We have a couple of titles in this podcast. <laughs> if we named these episodes, <laughs> and sandwich utility vehicle is not bad. All right, let's get to the parable of terrible. Let's it get is, since I finished my beer. Funker thinks this is a sandwich that we're about to have here All because right. it has noodles in it. <laughs> Individual spoons <laughs> yeah, for spaghetti, everyone. Spaghetti is a sandwich for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do we have any more beer? All right, I brought no, it's gone. Shit. Yeah. We always do this. All right, okay. Nick brought, and now we're going to have to get this. Now, 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 now we're going to have to get this. Now, this oh, is a homemade God. chili. Yeah, <laughs> let's get some of that in the. Microphone. <laughs> He's stirring That's chili. That's not me chewing. Folks. It's me sti- uh, stirring. So I made this chili earlier today. You put noodles in your chili? I do. I had this debate earlier, actually, with um, my girlfriend. Are oh, we doing another <laughs> internet debate? How <laughs> fucking lame! <laughs> she grew up not having noodles in her chili. I I never had noodles in you my. You did chili. what? No. So that's a that's a Cincinnati chili. No, that's not Cincinnati chili. I don't know what Cincinnati chili. It's is. got cinnamon. Cincinnati chilies. I mean, I don't want to offend anyone. It's, in it's all messed it's up. A, it's an acquired taste. Mm. So There's this cinnamon is... in the chili. <laughs> hold on, hold on. There's anybody that doesn't okay, take a spoonful. I'm gonna pass it around. Common cup. There. So is there are people in the world that think their chili can be chili without noodles? Yeah, that's definitely a thing. You're looking at one. Well, and like if you get you know chili I cheese fries chili. or something, there aren't noodles in that chili. I think it's actually more common for there not to be noodles. Oh, that's a good point. I would almost consider the chili that spills onto chili cheese fries as um, a sandwich. <laughs> not a sandwich, a but fried as fried potato sandwich. But as a different kind of thing than if I were to have a cup of chili. If you put the same thing you put on chili cheese fries into a cup and said, "Here's your thing of chili," I'd go, "What the fuck oh, is really? this?" I almost consider it different. I don't know why. I think it is. I get why you consider it differently. I guess because it's. Applied in that way, but I think that is the point. Is like this is chili, but it's added to fries. Like it's chili you could eat from a bowl. But, I grew up with, with noodles. With my dad putting uh, noodles in the bowl, though. One hundred percent agree chili. with that. Uh, the same the thing. The different thing that I do is because I I didn't like the noodles getting soggy if you just add them in like pretty early on and then slow cook it. Oh, yeah. So keep the noodles cook them separate. Them separately. Yes, yes. Always. Same thing with like chicken noodle soup. Totally. So that's the change I've made from old Papa Patriot's recipe. So he would do one pot. One pot shot. One pot shot. That's what they used to call him. All right, I'm looking in. Let's get the viewers here of this live stream. And we got some. Mm. Mm. <laughs> the chili. It sure looks delicious. <laughs> it is delicious. So let's talk about the chili. It's a little bit sweet, which I find interesting. I have a sweetness in there. Mm. Now, can you reveal on air to the listener? I cannot. On air to the listener <laughs> over the video live stream. And then later on no, this Friday. It. Cinnamon, oh, isn't tomorrow, it? I guess. There's no cinnamon. Cinnamon. Is cinnamon Matt, going? Is Matt's cinnamon, a bit of a food connoisseur. Well, I've watched let's the, have you, the Great British Baking Show. <laughs> let's have you break down the flavor profile of this chili as I talk through mm. full right, mouth gonna, of we're food. We're going to live watch. Oh, God. I hate this fucking <laughs> sound. 
Yeah, no chewing into the mic. That's our pledge to listeners. Yeah, this is awful. <laughs> the vegetables take a prominent role in the chili, which I like. Mm. A lot of times you have chili, and it's just it just tastes like someone put chili powder in your mouth. Mm. And it's a little more subtle here. Mm. You've let the ingredients play their part in the dish, and I like mm. that a lot. Thanks, man. So you like the That's chili a, overall? Oh, yeah, it's great. It's a really nice observation. I didn't notice that when I was having it. You're Hon- right. Honestly, I, I don't even know if I... Like, calling it chili is probably <gasps> not as accurate as what it a is. A disservice to the name. Because when I think of this chili... This is a soup. It's Yeah, it's like a chili soup, which... Now, what's the difference between soup and chili? <laughs> <laughs> no. That's a good question. Well, I, I would say chilies are potato or uh, tomato-based, oftentimes. Mm-hmm. Whereas oftentimes, soup is not necessarily... I'll take um, Funker's thing a step further. Sorry, I, I'll take it one step further and just say, not only does it not have a ton of chili flavor, it doesn't have a lot of um, like sauce or or the soup kind of broth. Right. I was just gonna say you've let it become like a almost like a spaghetti sauce spaghetti. style texture, mm. and it's not that a lot of times you'll get chili and it's kind of that fire engine red almost. Yeah, this yeah. has a nice deep brown to it. Yeah, good deep brown to it. Does it pair with the beer? I think that... I don't think anything pairs with this beer. (laughs) (laughs) No, I actually don't mind this. The only thing that I would say that is... The chili is fantastic, but the the game is parable or terrible. It is. And to me, the the beer... Not are we going to hurt Patriot's feelings or not. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Old Nick Pastry over here. (laughs) No, to me... No, I, I really do like the chili, but the beer is like a summer... Again, it's closer to like wine... You'd have it with cheese, you'd have it with bread, that kind of stuff. You'd have it with a Funker sandwich. But this chili's kind of more hearty. I would rather have this with, like, a stout. It would be good with tacos, you're right. Yeah, it would. No, but I'd rather have that beer with, like, a stout or cheese or something. Or, sorry, I'd rather have that beer with, with cheese and bread or something. I'd rather have this chili with, like, a stout. So I think they're both... Actually, I don't think the beer's that good. We're about to get into that. But um, I do think the chili's good. Unfortunately, I don't think it's parable. I think you're totally right, um, but fuck you. <laughs> so what's your verdict? Is it terrible or terrible? I say terrible as well. Terrible pairing. Yes, it's a terrible pairing. Keep in mind. Funker? It's terrible pairing. Mm-hmm. Terrible. <laughs> terrible. Terrible. Shh. By the way, I soaked these beans myself. Matt saw me doing it. If you know what I mean. <laughs> what do you What do you mean? What the fuck are you talking about? So you you never soaked beans. your beans. Never soaked your beans. Why do you soak beans? You have to soak your beans. You gotta soak your beans. Why do you have to? Aren't they soaking in the can in their bean juice? <laughs> <laughs> you use canned Man beans. beans. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> so you guys bought a can or bought beans from the grocery store in a dispenser no. or in a bag? I got a twenty-pound box of beans from Blue Apron last week. <laughs> oh, go to coldcanspodcast.com. Nothing so. but raw beans all week. <laughs> Till I discovered you're supposed to soak but them. But they were soaked. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. I, good chili. Thanks for bringing the chili. That was thanks, fun. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Um, can kind of changing subjects a little bit. One thing we talked about that I, I mean, not a little bit. This is just radically changing subjects. But, um, like Thank if we you had for your honesty, if we had an ad break, I would put it there so that we could come back and do a different subject. All right, we'll be right back after the break. <laughs> oh God, I can't. I was gonna. I was gonna sing the. Uh, what the fuck is the debate and tackle song? I was gonna start singing that. I can't remember it. Let's move past it. I don't know this. Oh, you mean like the words of the intro? Yeah. What was your intro? And what was where the we music? Tackle was where we debate the late or no? Where we tackle, tackle the latest, latest debates and debate the latest tackles? Madison Student Radio ninety three point whatever. W S U M Madison Student Radio. Snake on the lake. All right, we're back with cold cans. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the Brewers. I know it's going to isolate some listeners. We won't spend too much time on it, but. We're all good down down home Wisconsin folks here. Mm. We have sports teams that kind of perpetually torture us, and in, in my opinion, it's because of each sports uh, rookie contract system, which is sign somebody for four years. It generally, across all sports, takes an athlete four-ish mm. years professionally to develop, and as soon as they do develop, they're gone. So it's really hard for a small market team to do anything. Milwaukee has put together a team. The Brewers went to Game 7 of the World Series against the Los Angeles Dodgers. They lost. Well, NLCS. NLCS. Sorry, NLCS, yes, not World Series, sorry. Um, They lost. They did not go to the World Series. And I just wanted to take a couple minutes to point out where I think it all fell apart. Mm. I want to see if it Mm -hmm. goes with what you guys think. I I stayed up. I watched the entire 13-inning game um, where we pitched late into the game. And um, 
Junior Guerra was pitching, and it was clear they were going to pitch him until they either won or lost. And that's fine. That was a good decision. And what happened here is there was a guy on second base, and there was— What inning were we talking? One 13th? out or maybe two outs in the 13th okay. inning when the Dodgers walked it off. They had a guy on second. Uh, Cody Bellinger hit a base hit to right field, and the guy in second scored. Behind Cody Bellinger was their catcher, and I'm blanking on his name right now, Mm. Grendahl. Yeah, Grendahl. Uh, Grendahl. And then the pitcher, and they had nobody left on their bench. They would have to hit the pitcher. And they didn't intentionally walk Bellinger, who's maybe he was hitting seven, but he's one of their better hitters. Their lineup is just really good. That's the pivotal, like, fuck-up of the game. Mm. It was one run beat them. The guy on first base meant nothing. In fact, you do that almost always just to get a force-out opportunity. The the run It was extra innings. The guy in second is the only thing that mattered. We did yeah. walk him. Bellinger hit the base hit, and the game was over. I didn't stay up to watch that, but that surprises me that Council would let that go. It was, it was fucking egregious. It was atrocious. Because he always seems to be the guy who's like... Yeah, Ch- you, chess over checkers. Like he's always trying to do the the smart move. I think Bill Simmons said this on his <clears> podcast <throat> a lot, but it was kind of like the over managing Olympics of <laughs> this series, and <laughs> and I think that Council over managed himself a little bit in that situation. And to me, serious. Well, what could he have been thinking there? I I really don't know. Other than putting guys on base, is a bad idea. I I, I genuinely but that's a common don't thing. Know. If you only have, like if you can only give up one it's run extra and it's yeah, done, it's the bottom of the thirteenth. Yeah. It's over. Right. Multiple guys doesn't matter. I, I really genuinely don't know what he was thinking other than it was the 30 thing and they were tired and he didn't make the call. Hmm. Well, he didn't make the call either in game four then the next day when instead of walking Barnes, was it Barnes, to then have Puig yeah. pinch hit for Kershaw, he pitched to Barnes. Yeah. It would have got Kershaw. We, you and I were watching that right, together. Right, yeah. We got Kershaw out of the game and given the Brewers a chance to score runs because they were getting nothing going offensively. Yeah. And and he didn't do that. I think the, that one at least you can hypothetically come up with a reason, which is he you know, he didn't want to put another guy in base because that could be more runs. But in the bottom of the 13th, that means nothing, mm-hmm. and it made no sense. It was just a, it was a flub. It was. It well, was also, I think the series was also lost in game two when Turner hit that home run. Yeah. Yeah, it's like Bre- Brewers needed to take care of business at home. Yeah, they, they just didn't. they looked tired and out yeah. of sorts and in three, LA. Three games on the road in LA was never. They were always going to lose two of those. Mm-hmm. That's a tough draw for the supposed higher seed to go on the road three games in a row at the mm-hmm. World Series. Does it too? I think it's yeah. two three. Do two. they? That seems so ridiculous. odd to me because NBA is two two one one one. Right? Yeah. Which you, makes you me almost, way more sense. You almost, this is a radical idea, but you almost would want to like be able to choose and say, like, maybe I'll take three straight home games, right. still one on the road, right? versus the idea of having to win all four home games and mm-hmm. and have it, yeah, and to steal one on the road of the three. I, I, two, three, two is just garbage. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Overall, though, Brewers had, obviously had a great season based yeah, it was on fun to yeah. watch. what was expected of them. It was fun. Jeremy Jeffress, honestly, like, Blew that entire series for them. He did. He <laughs> pitched very poorly throughout the playoffs. And Yelich, even though Had he a hell got of a season, but yeah, where was Yelich? Yelich fell apart. He was our MVP. We needed him. He did. And they this is relevant to this podcast because they're the Milwaukee Brewers. Brewers. So, all right, <laughs> what? <laughs> I just wanted to mention that because we were talking about it before the show. Um, and then the other thing I have is a Glock's gripe. You guys need to hear a gripe. Uh oh. And we're moving to Glock's gripe corner. Wah, 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 wah. All right. I was getting on the highway this morning. Seattle's hitting a bit of its rainy season. Um, Nick's scraping the bottom of the, the pan. Of I the don't think you got quite all of it. Yeah, a little more. He's he's looking There's at the bottom. There's a hint of cinnamon on the side. Oh, what now? I revealed my secret ingredient. Was it really cinnamon? No, there's no cinnamon in that. It had some sweetness to it. Um, Dash of honey. Ooh, um, I, kn- I should have known it. I thought it maybe would be brown sugar. Nicholas pastry. Um, the here's my gripe. A little bit of rainy season. We're kind of moving a little slower when we're driving in Seattle. Mm-hmm. It's fine. I was getting on the highway, and the fucking thing I hate more than anything in the world is when you're getting on a highway, and somebody's behind you in a car, and they're kind of also getting on the highway, and you both have to merge onto the highway at the same time, and that person takes it upon themselves because they need to go faster than you mm. to merge and then immediately be going faster than you in than you in the lane that you it's have dangerous. to also merge to. It's absurd. We're still merging. There's still an order. There's still law in this goddamn You're country. In a society last right. time I checked. Oh, I hated it and I I don't I didn't know if I have anything else to follow up on that but like it just I hate when 
like a commute to work. This is maybe an advocate for taking a train, bus, bike, walk, whatever else other mechanism get to work. But I hate when a commute to work starts you off. You can never feel good driving in a car. You can only like get angry at something like that. And then mm-hmm. like my blood's boiling and it's right, the morning. Right. And now Fuck you're that. now you're mad at the person in front of you because they're not going driving just fast enough. Right. I I hated it. So I just wanted to get that out there. I appreciate that, Joe. I sold my car last year and never been happier. <sighs> I'm jealous. <laughs> Cause every time I mean I still drive a car occasionally mm-hmm. and I can't stand it. Yeah. Yeah. It's I've... just like a war zone. When you're on the fucking road. I've lived in some other big cities. Uh, they said the stretch, they, I don't know who they are, but they said the stretch between Washington, D.C. and Richmond, Virginia is the worst stretch of highway in the country. Oh, wow. And Seattle drivers are by far <laughs> worse than drivers in the D.C. Ooh, metro area. We got I a direct comparison, boy. At least at least they're aggressive in the East Coast. You know what you're going to get. Totally. Here, it's anarchy. Some like I was driving down the highway the other day, and everyone was going 10 miles under the speed limit across all lanes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What is going on? <laughs> yeah. In, in aggr- I like aggressive driving that's not being an asshole. You could be aggressive and be going fast if everyone else is going fast, but being an asshole is like going around someone when it's not time to go around right. someone. That's and just you, being incompetent. Usually when you're aggressive, you're at least paying attention because you're driving yeah. 20 miles over the speed limit. Drive offensively. That's how they teach you to drive. <laughs> All right. We can get off my Glock's gripe unless you guys have more to, to add to that or have your own gripe. I've Flunks. talked about traffic so much in my life. Do we have a flunker's flub in a Patriots uh, penalty? Penalty? God, good job. We'll see how the Bobco goes. We might have one next week. <laughs> yeah, bring that in for the pure tea. Ooh. All right. Let's rain. Let's let's bring this bullet train home. Um, before we get to the beer advocate score, I wanted to bring up a bit of a mailbag. We've had some time off. We released middle of the week last week, so we've had like a week and a half. Um, Ryan four two three on Snapchat. Uh oh. Says that uh, he's looking for more live streams. He wants to hang out with the boys. I did a live stream um, now, so that's too late. Uh, but maybe we'll give <laughs> listeners a heads up next time when we're gonna. Did we get any viewers? We had two people jump, jump on the live stream of Hell Flunker yeah. eating chili and <laughs> us debating whatever the fuck we were debating. Debating the latest tackles and tackling the, the latest, latest debates. debates. Yes. And I also had at Curly3412 said, last week a, a Lathrop, and that was our neighbors, a, a Lathrop shout out in the Bushlight episode, and you mentioned at Stodiac, <laughs> at J.O. Knows, and no one else. As a longtime listener, my heart is broken, and it... As broken as a Glockstock fantasy football team. My fantasy football team is 0-7, and, and I might not win a game this year. So, uh, good burn. And touche. Uh, I, yeah. I really think the reason I didn't mention him is because I couldn't remember his Twitter handle. Mm, and I didn't want to give his Twitter real handle. name out. Yeah, Curly, it's not as good as Stodiak or J.O. Knows. J.O. Knows. It's Curly3412. Oh. Yeah. Well, Step I guess that's no different game. in terms of being a name and then numbers than the other two. So, never mind. No, I, Curly actually I'll has... Take, I'll take umbrage with that. Curly is just a word, and then he added thirty-four twelve to it. I can't remember the fucking <laughs> random numbers. J. O. Edgar knows. Bennett and Aaron Rodgers numbers, obviously. <laughs> obviously. All right, I apologize. Two Sorry. greatest Packers in history. Right. Um, I don't think fifty was on there. <laughs> yeah, we'll get into that in a future <laughs> podcast. <laughs> AJ God. Hawk, the the president of the AJ Hawk fan club, is <laughs> now on the show. Anyway, Curly has an insider connection to this episode. He went to school with Andy's fiance, or fuck. <laughs> lady We're friend. leaving it in. I can bleep it up, but I'm not going I don't gonna. think his, she listens. Okay. Girlfriend, <laughs> lady friend, uh, they, Curly went to college with her in okay. like medical school. Very mm-hmm. cool. Mm-hmm. Where we got this beer from. Where, yeah. I heard about the beer. Yes. And, yeah. Fantastic. So, Curly, uh, if you're ever in the Midwest, try this fucking beer. Actually, don't try the beer, because we should get into rating the beer. Let's start with the Beer Advocate score. If you have it up, my dear boy, Nick Petrie. BA has 10 ratings on this beer. So not a very high sample size, but it does have a 3.83 out of 5, which translates to very good. Very good. Interesting. Very good. What's the distribution on this? Is this Midwest proper, or is this, like, just Chicago? It's got to be just Chicago. It's interesting. Who could say? It's a very specific <laughs> yeah, I didn't look into it. All right, well... They may rate it very good. I, I'll, I'll kick off the the ratings then. Um, I think that they. Oh, go ahead. You look like you were going to say something, Nick. Um, I, I would just. I remembered something from one of the BA reviewers. They okay, said because yeah, there's lactobacillus in here, so that's why it's sour. It's like fermented in that way, which is like something that they put in yogurt and stuff. Oh, interesting. Oh, so this is 
good for my gut. Yeah, this is basically kombucha. Oh, yeah. gut health. This is going to change the very fabric of the what we're about to do. <laughs> it's going to change the very fabric of my shorts if I don't get to a <laughs> toilet soon. Uh, so let's get into rankings. <laughs> um, nah, we. We compare. I compared it to Rodenbach Grand Cru, <laughs> but I don't think this thing is anywhere close to Rodenbach Grand Cru. Um, that beer was sweet, but in a we a were good so way. fucking pretentious putting Rodenbach way up there. I disagree. It's I ha- shit. No, I've had it recently, and it's very good. It's trash. I could not disagree more. Jeff I think Rodenbach Allworth is or whatever the hell is. Well, name Jeff was. Allworth can go right to hell. <laughs> um, but uh, Rodenbach Grand Cru is very good. I don't put this in that category. To me, I'm very mild about this beer. Mm. I just it didn't. It didn't do it for me. Um, and I, in all good conscience, oh, God, our website broke at mild cards. We'll have to figure that out. Um, in all good conscience, I don't think I can. Good. Mine's like, it starts to be italics all of a sudden. Oh, um, yeah, you're right. So uh, mild cards, I can't put this ahead of Montucky Cold Snacks because I love Montucky Cold Snacks. It's it's just such, we were talking about lagers and pilsners and simple beers earlier, and that strikes that. Um, By the way, I got a Snapchat open up that mailbag again. Snapchat from my cousin who lives in Minnesota who sent us the pseudo Sioux originally. Yeah. They now have Montucky available in uh, Minnesota. Oh, Montucky really? Cold snacks, yeah. So they're they're widening out. They are. Well, folks, if Montucky was just made available in your region, you can go back and listen to uh, I can't tell you what number uh, episode number sixty two. That's Montucky Cold Snacks from June twenty ninth. Um, I I have this at number four uh, number forty. Right below Sierra Nevada Torpedo Extra IPA because I like the Extra IPA. We talked about everybody just making IPAs, but I think that Sierra Nevada has taken a few years and workshopped their recipe, and it's like a stable beer. This thing's unstable. This thing's going to change next year if they if they make it again. I really think that it's just not is, quite there. Is this? Do you have something overall against like seasonal? things not at all we have lesion right. pumpkin beer at the top it's not that at all it's just that this one doesn't feel like it's i think we can discount developed. something though because of that like i don't think there's anything wrong with doing that that's all i'm saying yeah I, I, i'm not discounting it by the nature of it being seasonal i'm discounting it by the taste of it just feeling like it's like they made this batch and they they could have made a few more and mm. tinkered with it a little bit better to maybe smoothen it out to take some of that tang out of it sure um, whatever it is just doesn't feel like it's quite there yet. So this 2018 version of it, I have it at number 40 right below, below Sierra Nevada, Nevada Torpedo Extra IPA. I was actually going to put it a bit lower below Dale's Pale Ale. But Interesting. Above Melvin Killer Bees because it does seem like they're sort of going like with the fruit aspect of it. I think there's like honey or something in the Melvin Killer Bees. Or maybe I'm just thinking that because of bees. Discount that. <laughs> I was going to put it that low. Um I don't mind it being in that Who Garden Blue Moon territory though, because as well, I mentioned earlier, up. I know, but like like closer to where you are, those are thirty six, okay. thirty seven. Well, what, what specifically there. about like so between where I was and where you had it, we have Tipsy Toboggan, Grain Belt, Modelo Especial, Tecate, and Dale's Pale Ale. I like those just like solid everyday beers in there: Grain I Belt, Tecate, Dale's Pale Ale, it's and a, Modelo. You're swinging me. I do too. I agree with you. I think it was Tipsy Toboggan that I just I don't did I have that? Oh, I don't know. That had was the one you had. Yeah. I didn't have that. Yeah, it, it, you and it was kind of nondescript. It was a good like holiday beer, but back okay. to being seasonal. You, these seasonal beers are kind of forgettable after long enough. You have them, you don't mm-hmm. have access to them all year, and then you don't remember what they are. Well, there's a reason that they're seasonal, right? They're either not very good, yeah, or they're only good once a year, right? Super specific mm. times, yeah. right? Which we've have made an exception. We talked about Elysian um, uh, Night, Night Owl, Owl, which is a pumpkin ale, which is it does stick out. I know exactly what that tastes like. Yeah, and I crave it. And these seasonals, like to your point, Flicker, they just. They're not good enough to do that. So that's why I had it above Tipsy Toboggan, but I'm also good down there. This feels like we're in the right range. Lunker, uh, what do you think? I think it's deplorable. Oh, my I, God. I would not want another glass of this. Sure. Oh, that's a good point. And, well, where would you... So deplorable oh, we starts... Put bush with, light in the deplorables? I don't remember doing that. It must have been somebody else. You were, you were distracted. The brewers were on. <laughs> I, when I was scrolling through deplorables, I saw Bud Light Lime. I wasn't here when you had that, but drinking a Bud Light Lime... I have a lot of the same feelings when I drink mm. this. This is fine. This is a novelty. Ah. This isn't something I want more of. Yeah. And then by the end, I'm like, okay, good. Look, now can I have another beer? Yeah. A different a beer. A different beer. Yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, I want to continue to stress it is um, illegal in, in that we'll call the cops if you <laughs> listen to the Bud Light Lime episode. 
Um, remember, oh, please oh, delete that, Bud yeah. Light Lion. If we could delete it off the website, we would. Um, please delete it off of your podcast iPod app. Um, yes, get we it lost off the there. login to the website, right. so we can't log So in. don't Remove think about it. going back and looking at Bud Light Lime, which is the number 51 episode of the podcast, um, because you need to delete it, and it is illegal to listen to it. I think if we keep pissing off Curly, he's going to lead the R.I.P. Brian movement. Shoot! That's twice now you fucked up. <clears throat> um, Pardon me. We'll take that offline. Our lawyers just both stood up in the corner and <laughs> sit back down, guys. It's okay. Put their hands on their holsters. Yeah, I know. Why they do they have guns? <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Uh, so you have it at, at what, uh, uh, 49 above Bud Light Line, below Bush Light? Yeah, around there. Yeah, and I wouldn't be opposed to having it lower. I, I'm just, I'm not really a fan. So, well, may I point listeners direct or uh, attention towards statute 1.1 from um Loyal listener and former guest Zachary Patriot Section stating, one, yes, one. yes, thank yes. you. Stating the first that amendment ever, guests, Cold Nation's Constitution. Guests, which we can argue your status as of now, coming He's on still twice a guest at the moment. A, okay, okay, banning the ones and twos. It's true. So guests' opinions on the beer shall not influence the final ranking of said beer. And we I are would, the arbiters. I would never, never want to influence your ranking ever. I'm oh, just thank purely you. stating. And you never Fast. fair and balanced. <laughs> yeah. Let's just be yeah, let's just say you never will. This is not the Cold Cans boys are not the Big Ten party. We do not welcome anyone. <laughs> we in. are not for sale. There are there are plenty of beers though down there that I would never have another drink of. And if you look at Russian radioactives, um oh, yeah, there is a pineapple below with deplorables. Palisades pineapple, not your father's mountain ale, Odul, Smirnoff Ice, Bud Light, Chalada, and Sparks are all atrocious. Okay. This isn't let's atrocious. defend it's this deplorable. beer. Yeah, let's defend this beer a little bit. It's a cool, like, collaboration or something f- from a Lake Effect Brewing, which they're, is a cool name. Cool Chicago name, they're experimenting. Brewery, they're experimenting, which I love to do. You say experimenting. My, experimenting. An experiment. Yes. Experiment, I only experiment, experiment with the spearmint herb. Experiment snooze. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we should have sold. We should have pitched Jewel back in the day when we had the chance. Yeah, listeners should Speaking know we had a chance products. to sell you guys Jewel and make some fucking money, and we didn't. All right. <laughs> yeah, we're looking out for you. Go smoke Jewel all you want. <laughs> I don't give a shit. All right. Uh, we will not let Matt influence us. Nick, you were going to defend the beer. I, I agree I that, that it's cool. It's and a from cool a blueberry perspective. Blueberries are tart, typically, right. like good blueberries. We have the blueberry flavor tart. Well, of course not. Yeah, they're not the sourness. They're not that. And I don't like sour beers, so that's definitely affecting. Well, again, okay, as sure. we said, you will not influence our ranking. <laughs> um, but the you can the... still talk. <laughs> <laughs> Getting there though. <laughs> <laughs> but no, the the I, I totally agree with that, with what you're saying. I mean, so I think it's not as bad as maybe we're saying. We've had a cranberry expert on the show. Maybe he we could did. weigh in on Twitter at, about blueberries. As yes, well. he should. Um, but Our commission. I think it's a good defense, but on my own volition, I think I want to drop this down to the deplorable range. <laughs> and I was not yes. influenced by anyone. Oh, my um, God. I would, I would either put this at, I want to drop it for sure down to where you had it, which would be number 45, but I would also put it as low as number 50. I just didn't like this beer, and um, not that it... Paid, not that it had any weight in my decision, but I agree with Flunker in that I would not pick it up again. If you I, bought that at a store, I'd go, fuck, <laughs> I'd rather have a different beer than that. We were mm-hmm. looking at the cloudiness of the beer from the top of the bottle to the bottom. Yeah. That's interesting. It's not developed yet. That's what a beer that's not developed would look like. The first Cold no, Cans Kolsch is going to look like that. It's an allegory for the the perpetual increase in haziness of life's journey. Oh, it always man. gets more cloudy. Does it in get more tart too? <laughs> and life gets tartar. Life gets tartar, and th- ain't that an tartar allegory? And tartar. All right, where are we putting it? Let's take this <clears throat> bullet train home. Um, may I remind you, the head brewer of Melvin Killer Bees was accused of statutory rape <laughs> a couple months ago. So we should put this. So above we should put Mel- this above Melvin, Melvin Killer-, Killer Bees. I don't yeah, know. Maybe was, we should drop that know all the way off the means. fucking rankings and fuck Melvin Killer Bees. We didn't like it and fuck that guy. Yeah, I don't know why. I guess it had a cool, maybe a cool um, logo or something. Why did it we did, put it up it so did. high? It had a cool logo for sure. We didn't really touch on this logo other than it's highlighting Lake Huron of the Great Lakes. It, it's pretty nondescript. They didn't do much with it. All right, I'm good with that, Nick. Should we stick it at number 45 and call it a goddamn day? 
Yeah, let's do it. I got to check on this Melvin Killer Bees thing now. I'm going to get sued. All right. Well, you check on that, and next week we will uh, we'll round back um, on Mel- Melvin Killer Bees. And in the meantime, um, Matt, thanks again for joining us. Thanks for manning the ones and twos. Always a pleasure. Thanks for being here, Matt. And thanks Good for your blasphemous you. take on sandwiches. And <laughs> your number 45 best beer in the history of the world is the, I don't even remember what it is, Lake Effect Brewing Company's Blueberry Berlin Weiss Style Ale. Fuck Melvin Killer Bees. And as always, fuck Jeff Allworth. (laughs) And remember, folks, chili chili. According to a dash of Google research, the Melvin Killer Bees beer that I uh, alluded to earlier in relation to a uh, allegation, the actual story is that in December of 2017, an employee of Melvin Brewing was at a neighboring brewery and inappropriately touched an employee there. Uh, that's all I have to say, except for one more thing, fuck Melvin Brewing. Fuck Jeff Allworth. The Cold Cans Podcast is recorded in the Overcast Room at Cloud Studios in Seattle, Washington. Visit cloudstudioseattle.com 